CWO just updated their CSTAR software to version 3.0.0. Within that software update is a firmware update, and within the firmware update is an alpaca update to version 1.1.2-1. This alpaca update now gives us the ability to dither, turn on the dew heater, and park the mount using programs like Nina and Seastar. Hi, I'm Curtis, and welcome to my channel. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to connect to those features, both in Nina and in SharpCap. And I'll do a demonstration of several of them. I can't do a dithering demonstration out here in the daylight but you'll have to take my word for it. Now, I am not gonna go over the Seastar app itself, the new features in version 3.0.0. This is strictly to take a look at the Alpaca improvements within the latest version of Seastar firmware, which adds even more capability to us when using software like Nina and SharpCap with your C-Star. As always, if you learn something useful from this video, please take the moment to press the like button. That enables me to reach more people. And if you wanna support this channel, you can use my affiliate links down below the video where it says more under the description at no cost to you. To get the latest Alpaca update, you're gonna to have to first download the latest version of the C-Star app, as I mentioned before. So if you have an iPhone, you go to the Apple Store. If you have a uh, Android phone, you'll go to the Google Store and look for the Seastar app. I'm sure you've done this before. And you'll download version 3.0.0, as I said before. Once you've downloaded the latest version of the app, you should connect your Seastar as usual, and then it will force a firmware update. And then on the first page, where you see the C star at the top, then you see the open arm command there. On the lower right, tap on me, and that'll take you to this page on the C star app, and you'll see the firmware version 6.4.5. And if you tap on the right arrow, you'll see that you're up to date. And that's it. When it updates the firmware, it also updates Alpaca to version 1.1.2-1 and you're ready to go. Let's first demonstrate these new C-Star control features in Nina. So for dithering, you'll have to go under the guider and yours won't look like this. You won't have anything populated in here since I've already connected dithering uh, previously. Yeah, this will be blank. And then under here, you're gonna wanna go to mount dither and then this guider pixel scale is set by your camera. The uh, number of pixels to dither you'll see over here. Once we connect, you'll be able to change that. And as far as the heater, again, you go under switches here, and then under the switch, no switch, you'll have to scan like you've done before uh, here, scan for device. And then since I've already done this many times, you'll see the position of the heater show up. So I'm gonna just go down here and say, connect all devices. And one of the first things that happens is that you see this message here telling, do you wanna use the settings from Nina or the mount? And the reason for that, even though I've connected Nina to the mount before, is that the Alpaca in Seastar still does not accept the elevation from Nina. So it's gonna to set to zero meters elevation. That's not gonna really affect us too much, but it'd be nice if they fixed that. So I'm gonna take from Nina to the mount, and then you'll see down here, it was unable to set the mount elevation correctly. So the telescope is connected, focuser is connected, the guider is connected, close all of those. Now we wanna connect the heater. So we have to pick that one and then we'll hit connect. And then you see the dew heater and it's successfully connected. So I think we got everything here. There's the camera, there's the filter wheel, the focuser, the mount dithering and the heater switch. 
So let's first demonstrate the dew heater. All you can do here is turn it on and off. You can't set a level to say 50%, 90%. It's either on or it's not. Same as in the Seastar app itself. So click for on. Now, how do I know it's actually on? So my external power supply there has a meter in it so I can see how much power is being drawn by the Seastar. So whenever I turn on the heater, that draw goes up by one watt. That's consistent with what I've measured in the past, that the heater in the Seastar draws about a half to one watt of power. So it increments by the lowest digit it can, which is one watt on that meter. Then when I turn it off, it goes back down by one watt. So I'm sure it's on. As far as dithering, it's daytime here. I'm not going to demonstrate dithering. I've done dithering with the Sea Star, and I had access to an early version of that part of the alpaca that enabled the dithering. I was able to demonstrate that I could successfully dither. Other people have done the same, so we know dithering works. Here's where you would change the number of pixels. If you wanted it to be more than five, you could set it to 10. I think Sea Star does 50. You can do whatever you want. And if you want it only to dither and write ascension, you would click this, on or off. The normal is off. You really don't need to change any of these other uh, numbers here. Some of these you can't change anyway. Then the last thing to demonstrate is the park position. So let's go into the mount. And we're going to have to unpark the mount since park now works. So that's a... A uh, good indication that park is working. So the one of the first commands you want to do when you set up a sequence in uh, Nina is you're going to want to unpark the mount. We have it set to sidereal. So let me just open it. I'm going to click on north. So it's going to move in declination. It's going to open up. I have the cover over the lens. So I don't inadvertently point at the sun, even though the sun is setting. And then let's move in right ascension. Move it all the way up. Okay, so previously in my tutorials, I pointed out that you can actually use the home position. That was working, that would close the arm but we typically uh, use the park command in these sequencers. It doesn't matter, um, home will get it home, but you'd have to manually click on home. If you set up the sequencer, it doesn't have a home function. It has a park, an unpark and a park function. So if you want to automate this fully, you need the park command, which we now do have. So let me click on the park command and you see it's gonna go back to the arm closed position. So it's as simple as that. It's not quite finished. You'll see the, there we go. So now it's asking for the unpark, which means it's done communicating. We can disconnect everything. And that demonstrates those new features uh, are working in Nina. So now let's do the same demonstration in SharpCap. SharpCap just came out with a new version. I have the pro version and there is a new update. You can see the update here. Typically SharpCap will prompt you when you open it that there's a new update. So let's go in there and there's the camera. If you haven't done this before, you'll have to scan for it and then you'll see the address. It will connect to the camera and sometimes it automatically connects to the other hardware that I've already set up. Not the very first time you do it. And if you want to know how all this works, you can watch my other tutorial on how to get up and running using uh, SharpCap to control the C-Star. So since it didn't automatically, we'll go over here to File, SharpCap Settings. And over here, we'll go to Hardware. It says None. And there's the mount. 
here's the focuser, here's the filter wheel, no rotator, but we have a switch here, same as in Nina, and you see I've already connected this, so that is going to be our heater, and we'll say apply, and then it'll connect all of those. It's flashing, meaning that it's making connections. I'll hit the OK here. And if these things are not checked where it says connected, check them. Check again. Check here. Check here. So we have the dew heater here, filter, wheel, the um, focuser and the mount and of course the camera is already connected so we want to turn on the heater simply click here now the heater will turn on that's no problem if we want to demonstrate the um, closing the arm I'll just make it do a go to and I'm gonna make it go to Andromeda Galaxy So you see the mount moving. Okay, so now it's there. Now we want to park this thing. Let's hit park. And then this screen pops up and you will see this thing going down to park. And there it should be parked. And when it parked, it disconnected the um, telescope. So as far as dithering, I've never used dithering in SharpCap. So you would go to the guider, and obviously we don't have a guide camera, so we're not using that normal PhD2. So here's the dither only, no guiding, using IASCOM mount pulse guiding. I don't know if this actually works. I haven't tested it out yet. I've sent a note to Robin, the author of SharpCap, to see, because I've never done dithering here, so I'm not really sure how to make this work. And um, you see the settings that you could choose here for the step size and how quick you settle and the settling time and whether you want to dither in right ascension only or not but so if you already know how to dither in a sharp cap you could give it a try yourself in the meantime I'm gonna wait and see what response I get from Robin on dithering here without a guider in sharp cap so we see that we now have control of the dew heater in sharp cap as well and also park position work as it does for other astronomy mounts and the dithering is still up in the air just exactly how that works and whether it works uh, with sharp cap now or not. I want to thank you for taking the time to watch. Don't forget to hit the like button. And until next time, clear skies.